let's begin our um, 12th uh, live session on introduction to wireless and cellular communications my name is avik and i'm a phd research scholar at the department of electrical engineering at iit madras so this is the final session for this course and um, we'll be discussing the sample problems related to the contents of week number 12 of the course in week 12 uh, we were you know mainly dealing with uh, mimo mimo system uh, multiple input multiple output systems so if you remember the model diagram uh, we had multiple antennas at the receiver and multiple antennas at the transmitter uh, particularly nt transmitting antennas and nr uh, receiving antennas so and you remember every transmitting antenna to receiving antenna link had a channel gain or a channel coefficient yeah so as i was saying um just a recap of those contents so we studied mimo and as i was saying uh, we had the channel transform matrix right that h so the entry is uh, aware of the form small h ij suffix meaning that it is a channel gain from the jth transmitting antenna to the ith receiving antenna so the first index i corresponds to the receiver and the second index j corresponds to the transmitting antenna Okay, and um, then uh, we looked at um, uh, the analysis of uh, MIMO channels uh, with and without the channel state information. So at first we assumed that the CSI or the channel state information was available at the transmitter, and uh, then what we did was simple SVD, singular value decomposition, and we uh, designed a parallel set of L channels, and then. Um, uh the second case was with csit uh, sorry without csit and uh, in which we actually um, uh, went for the ergodic capacity approach and uh, so the model was of the form y equals to hx plus n so i mean the notation should be familiar to you and um, uh, this so, so so there were certain underlying conditions and assumptions right if you remember uh what kind of distribution should they follow okay whether sh they should be gaussian or not those things so and then after studying the model then we move to a very fundamental aspect of uh, information theory namely entropy right denoted by capital h of x where x is a random variable so the entropy uh, very uh, in layman terms uh, can be stated as a average information contained or the average uncertainty right so we looked at its uh, mathematical expression and how entropy and uh, mutual information these things are related right we related mutual information with the entropy and also like the conditional entropy if you remember that form and how then we move to capacity so capacity is nothing but the maximum mutual information right and then we looked at the log determinant capacity of mimo channels if you remember that log dead log dead capacity and uh, then we also studied the properties of uh, h h hermitian remember that matrix h that channel transform matrix of dimension nr by nt so that uh, matrix h h hermitian so we looked at its properties what kind of um, characteristics does it have and then uh, we also analyzed what happens to the normalized capacity which was c by b uh, in bits per second per hertz uh, uh, if uh, under under certain uh, 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 special cases uh, the first special case being the receive diversity where we had more number of uh, multiple uh, receiving antennas and only single transmit antenna 
what happens to the C by B and then the second special case was the case of transmit diversity where we had multiple transmit antennas whereas only one receiving antenna. So that's a very um, uh, brief uh, you know, overview or summary of uh, the week number 12's content. So we'll try to uh, solve some numericals and basic conceptual questions related to these concepts. So let's get started okay so now we'll, all of you can see question number one and two on the screen and let's begin with the first question because that let me just put the heading So let's start with the first question. Okay, read the first question. All right. So we are given a 16 coam modulation scheme, right? Quadrature amplitude modulation. So 16 coam means there are 16 symbols, right? And we know that uh, each symbol should have four bits because 16 is two power four, right? So all the way from zero zero zero, all zero to all ones, right? So those uh, 16 symbols and um, all the symbols are equally likely it is mentioned okay that means the probability of transmission of all the 16 symbols are equal meaning that each of those probability of transmission of each symbol is 1 by 16 given this information you need to find the entropy of the source in terms of number of bits per channel used. okay So this is simple, um, again question based on entropy, okay so let's note down the given information, uh, you can uh, post the answer uh, in the chat box also or just unmute and say your answer also, uh, if you have already solved it, so 16 quam. means we have 16 symbols right so let, let me label them as s1 s2 so on till s16 okay and it is given that the symbols are equally likely okay equally likely symbols and what does this mean this means the probability of transmission of symbol 1 is equal to the probability of transmission of symbol 2 so on is equal to the probability of transmission of the 16th symbol is equal to 1 by the total number of symbols right so this denotes the notation is as follows okay s i is the ith symbol and p i is the probability of transmission of the 
ih symbol okay and also here i belongs to this set 1 2 so on till 16 because there are 16 symbols and corresponding 16 indices okay So now, how do we find the entropy? We know entropy, entropy of source. So usually the source is denoted by capital A. So entropy of source is usually denoted by capital H of S. Okay, is equal to you remember summation the probabilities times log base two of the reciprocal of probabilities. Remember. So, summation i, p i, we have used this notation for probability of, uh, of transmission of the i s symbol, this p i times log base 2 of 1 by p i, or you can also write it as minus log base 2 of p i, because log of 1 by something is simply the negative of log of the thing. So, and here i runs from 1 to 16. Okay. So this is one to sixteen. What is PI? It's given right, equally likely symbol. So all these PIs are equal to one by sixteen. We have already written this is one by sixteen times log base two. What happens to one by PI? it is 16 just a reciprocal okay so this is summation i runs from 1 to 16 1 by 16 into so log base 2 of 16 let me admit So log base 2 of 16 is nothing but 4, right? So 4 comes to the numerator and this is nothing but simply 1 by 4, right? So summation i running from 1 to 16, I think already someone has written in the chat box. This is summation i running from 1 to 16, 1 by 4. So you are adding 1 by 4 16 times basically. So this is 1 by 4 into 16 which is 4 bits per symbol or bits per channel okay and that's what you expect right uh, because that's that's what in uh, 16 quam you expect a, all the symbols to have 4 bits right so this is the entropy right okay so this is your answer and if you check with the options, it is option D, 4. Yeah, exactly. So, thanks. People have already given the right answer, very good. So, so the option is D. For those who joined late, so we were looking at the first question. First question is based on computation of entropy of source, okay, in a 16 quam constellation where all the symbols are equally likely. So all the probabilities of transmission is simply 1 over 16, right, and we use the formula of entropy, simply this, and we just uh, substituted pi equals to 1 by 16 and that's it that's it it is simply equal to 4 so option d is the right answer okay all right this was i think smooth so now let's move to the second one please read the second question
okay the second one it's a variation of the first problem in this second question uh, a, a particular condition is given that two out of the 16 uh, symbols are tra are transmitted twice as frequently as the other remaining 14 symbols okay so this is the given condition so we obviously expect the entropy to be affected right the entropy entropy should change although there is also an option c which says again it's four but here essentially what will happen is the probabilities are not equally likely anymore so we will have a different entropy this time so two of the 16 symbols are transmitted twice as frequently as the remaining 14 symbols that means that the probability of transmission of those two symbols is actually twice the probability of transmission of the other 14 symbols right and what we can do is we can take a variable p let's say the probability of transmission of the other 14 symbols be p so therefore the probability of transmission of these two symbols are twice p right and now uh, uh, the probability should satisfy the constraint that they should add up to one so we'll apply that constraint and then we can get p once we get p we now know the probabilities of transmission of all the symbols we can simply put it in the formula of entropy and then find the entropy that's it so we'll simply do that okay so this is uh, i should say variation of question one okay so um, what they are saying is now uh, two of the 16 poem symbols so these two symbols let me let, let's say these two symbols be s1 and uh, or maybe s15 and s16 let's say let's say the last two symbols let's uh, it doesn't really matter these two symbols are transmitted twice as frequently as the other 14 poem symbols okay so total there are 16 symbols two are transmitted with more probability twice the probability as that of transmission of the remaining 14 symbols so these remaining 14 therefore will be s1 s2 so on till s14 based on our assumption okay We are assuming. So now let me go to the next page. Now, as I said, we can assume let the probability of transmission of the those other. 14 symbols which are uh, less likely to be transmitted of those other 14 poem symbols be some capital P let's say okay and therefore we can now claim that the probability of transmission of the other two poem symbols so I'm again writing these 14 means 
by our assumption s1 s2 so until s14 and these two means the other remaining two s15 and s16 so probability of transmission of s15 and s16 is now twice the as per the question because they are transmitted they are transmitted twice as frequently okay and now we have the constraint on probabilities so which says that i have 16 symbols and i must have the probabilities adding to one okay right so now you can split this summation into two parts okay one is the case when you are adding the pi's for the those 14 less likely to be transmitted symbols right s1 till s14 this is the first thing and another summation is for s15 and s16 which are twice as likely to be transmitted and this is one so this the first term here first summation we have used the variable p right and for the second summation it is simply 2p twice correct now again i think you have the probability at least you have already figured out so the first term is adding p basically 14 times this is 14p and the second term is basically comprising of the second summation is basically comprising of two terms because i running from 15 to 16 so two terms and we are adding 2p two times so that results in 4p is equal to 1 and please feel free to you know um, interrupt me and uh, let me know in case uh, there is any silly mistake or anything because there is high chance so you get i think 18p equals to 1 so you find p okay you have found p and that's it now the final step is to find the entropy right so entropy again you can now uh, break the summation into two parts right one for the less likely 14 symbols for which you will have p times log base to 1 by p okay this is 1 by p okay so 1 by p right and for the other two and here replace just p by 2p okay because their probability of transmission is two times p okay and now we know p simply 1 by 18 okay so this is i running from 1 to 14 1 by 18 log base 2 of 1 by 18 we take the reciprocal it becomes 18 this is 2p becomes basically 2 times 1 by 18 which is 1 by 9 and inside logarithm you have it reciprocal okay wait someone wants to join okay now um, we can actually simplify this also so this this you see for the first summation you will have 14 such terms right it gets added 14 times so it becomes 14 by 18 times log base 2 of 18 and um, for the second summation it gets added two times so 2 by 9 log base 2 of 9 okay, 
3.94 ah exactly exactly so it's good good that uh, people are actually calculating thank you yeah yeah they absolutely right it's 3.94 indeed um so so this you can simplify uh 7 by 9 right so you have 7 by 9 log base 2 of 18 you can now write it as 2 times 9 right and the reason why you write it will be just is already clear now because you have 9 inside log for the second term so we want to take something common and uh, to in order to simplify it right and now this first log is log of x times y so log of x times y we know the property of log it's simply log x plus log y so this is log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 9 and log base 2 of 2 is simply 1 right plus log base 2 of 9 right and this is the other term okay so we have 7 by 9 plus again we can take log base 2 9 as common okay and its coefficient will be simply 7 by 9 plus 2 by 9 which is simply 1 so this is simply this okay and again log base 2 this is base 2 you can convert it to any other base let's say base e the natural logarithm simply by doing ln of 9 divided by ln of 2 correct and this would be simply something like 7 by 9 plus 3.169925 something like that and exactly it is 3.94 as someone told absolutely so you see the effect it's no longer 4 right in our previous case where we had equally likely symbols it was 4 the entropy was 4 so this is another observation okay this is another observation that this is the maximum entropy and essentially what kind of distribution we have here is a uniform distribution right all the symbols are equally likely right so they are uniformly distributed equally likely and you get 4 4 bits per symbol whereas here it's no longer equally likely there is a disturbance two of them are more likely to be considered as a result of which it gets reduced So this 3.94 is less than 4. Correct. Right? That's that's a small observation. So this is less than previous case. Okay. Pardon me for my handwriting, but uh, but uh, the thing is we got 3.94 which matches with option. Um, sorry, option A. this is option a great right good and um, i think there was one numerical question i think for uh, this uh, week's assignment on finding the um entropy of a uh, gaussian distribution with uh, mean uh, mu and uh, variance sigma square so i believe um, uh, everyone should be able to solve it um it's simply like uh, you you compute the differential entropy right the formula and all everything was discussed in the lectures also um remember this uh, fx of x uh, how do you calculate the um, 
differential entropy because it's a continuous scenario here so minus infinity to infinity integral fx of x which is the pdf of the distribution in our case it's the gaussian distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square you already know the form of the pdf so integration fx of x log base 2 of 1 by fx of x or simply you can take a negative sign and avoid the reciprocal product of sign. Of course, with dx, this integration you have to do. So, and it should uh, give you a very simplified result. Um, I think people should be able to solve it. Alright, so now moving to the third question. Again, I mean, um, the, so the properties of this H H Hermitian was discussed, right, uh, in the lecture. So this is one of the questions related to that. So uh, please don't get confused with the notations. Actually, all are H here, but you see, that's why I have tried to, you know, use a bold symbol, a darker uh, symbol for the matrix, for the channel channel transition matrix. It's in bold, whereas the H in the superscript it's actually the Hermitian. Okay, that's the Hermitian operator. Right, that's not in bold. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, sorry for interrupting. No, uh, fine. Yeah. I'm having one doubt in question number uh, eight in the week twelve assignment. Okay. Uh, sir, here it is written like if three of the eight PSK symbols are transmitted. My point is that in place of three, it should be six now, sir. Yeah, actually, I was planning to come to that as well. So, okay. there is, I think, I believe, I also looked at it. So, I believe there is a small uh, typo there. Yeah, okay. sir. So, this one, this question number seven, or, or question number eight, I think. Yeah, eight, sir. So in question number eight, actually, it should be what is the entropy in the above problem? Is if three of the five PSK symbols are transmitted five times as frequently as the other, instead of other two, it should be other five symbols. Okay, sir. Right, okay. because yeah. already three are transmitted, so remaining yes, there sir. are five. So you you can simply just you know ignore the last T W O two. Well, so, so just consider the remaining five symbols as the same. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. So yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I was, I was also about to, you know, tell that in the end, towards the end. But anyways, thanks to you for uh, pointing it out. Yeah. So please, Thank everyone, uh, please uh, make this note. Okay. Yeah. Then I guess you should be able to solve it. Okay. Good. Right. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll mention as a note also that um, week 12 assignment question 8. So, so it ends with basically other five symbols. How should I you know, write this? So, like three of the eight symbols are transmitted. five times frequently as the other 
five symbols. Instead of two symbols, it will be five symbols. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Right. And now um, I think you can uh, solve it and check also. Uh, if you it should be getting uh, uh, a valid answer if still you uh, don't get any you know right answer then you can post it in the discussion forum maybe. but I think I hope this should be fine okay so now we were in question number three right okay question number three is about the property of H H term uh, Hermitian okay this H is the same that uh, remember that uh, MIMO model y equals to okay let me not use vector notation let me just use the literals y equals to hx plus n okay so where y was a nr by 1 vector h was our channel transform matrix of dimension nr by nt okay and x was the input vector of dimension nt by 1 and this was the noise vector of dimension nr cross so again, I mean, nt was the number of transmitting antennas and nr the number of receiving antennas. Okay, we know this, and well, now so h I already uh, wrote it's the channel. Transform matrix or channel matrix. So this is of dimension nr by nt. Okay. So our first option, option A, is saying H H Hermitian is a rectangular matrix. Let's check. We need to find in the question. We need to find which of the following is true. So H H Hermitian. So first, if H is of dimension n r by n t, then H Hermitian. By the way, uh, I hope everyone is familiar with what does Hermitian mean. Hermitian means the transpose conjugate uh, of, of of a particular matrix, right? Okay. So, yeah. So, just as an aside, H Hermitian, H in superscript. This is the Hermitian operator, which is. Transpose, sorry, transpose conjugate. So you do two things: you take the transpose of the matrix and also take the conjugate of the elements. Okay, fine, great. So this will be of dimension since you are already taking transpose. It gets swapped. It becomes n t by n r right and now in the question you are asked about the dimension of h h hermitian so h h hermitian now what will be its dimension so this one is n r cross n t and this one is h hermitian is n t cross n r and you, you know by the law of matrix multiplication the resultant matrix that you get will be of dimension you take the number of rows of the 
free multiplier and you take the number of columns of the post multiplier that's it so this will be of dimension nr by nr we know this this is fine and here nr by nr matrix we are getting so this is clearly a square matrix this is a square matrix but in our option it says it's a rectangular matrix so option a is not right so option a is clearly wrong okay now let's check with option b what does option b say option b is saying h h hermitian is equals to h hermitian h you need to check if that's true or not okay so h h hermitian the uh, quantity on the left side uh, in option b is h h hermitian so we just looked at h h hermitian it's a square matrix of dimension nr now what about the term on the right hand side h hermitian h so h hermitian h let's see what does h hermitian h look like h hermitian h okay h hermitian is of dimension we just saw here right is of dimension nt by nr this is of dimension nt by nr and h is of dimension nr by nt so overall again by the same logic the dimension of this product would be nt by nt this is also a square matrix but clearly its order is different from the previous one so these two different orders or different dimensions right and two matrix they are of different dimensions and of course they can't be equal right it automatically makes them unequal okay i mean here essentially we are assuming that okay n n t and n r are not same it's a general could be anything so that's the thing right so option b again option b is not true so therefore therefore h h hermitian is not equals to h hermitian h okay so again our option b is also not true. now let's check the third case what does it say h h hermitian is equals to h h hermitian the whole hermitian whether this is true or not we have to check so it says okay h h hermitian we have already looked it's a nr by nr uh, square matrix so this whole hermitian if we do okay what do we get here so we get by the way if i do a b hermitian whole hermitian right a b are matrices i can expand this as b hermitian a hermitian right so i will use this simply you treat the first one as a and the second one which is a h hermitian as b how can you write this first term is b hermitian so b is h hermitian that whole hermitian right okay times a hermitian a a is h so h hermitian okay now here we have h hermitian already there is a hermitian and there is further another hermitian so it's basically cancelling out right so if you take in other words if you take the transpose conjugate of a matrix two times you go back to the same matrix again right so this is the 
first term will back will be back to h and the second term is simply h h hermitian so you see this whole hermitian outside the bracket uh, actually uh, gave us the same matrix back so these are the, so th therefore therefore this matrix actually h h hermitian whatever is in the bracket is actually a self adjoint sometimes hermitian is also known as adjoint uh, in physics and this this is also like self hermitian we can say so this is also a, a hermitian matrix right this is uh, satisfying this property so and this was actually one of the property which was discussed in the lectures that h h hermitian is itself hermitian okay so that this is what we clearly saw and the reason was this how we can write it expand this okay so clearly this is actually the option c right the option c the option c is actually c so option c is actually c so answer is option c easy it's very easy it's just uh, just taking the dimensionality and that's it fine okay now let's look at the fourth one okay so in the fourth one again um, the typical mimo scenario we have nr receiving antennas and nt transmit antennas and the channel transfer matrix is capital h and it is given to be full rank and then uh, how can we express rank of leech uh, this again we have seen in the lectures you can straight away answer in one second so we know this question 4 wrote yeah exactly exactly correct correct so in my mo we know that h is nr by nt channel transform matrix right and so this is nr is the number of rows nt is the number of columns rank of a matrix h is a matrix so rank of a matrix is less than or equal to it is upper bounded by the minimum out of the number of rows and the number of columns okay and here i think uh, they have used capital r and capital t notation so i will stick to their notation okay in in this particular question actually so n r by n t okay so Therefore, it will be the minimum of nr and nt. And now, this is upper bounded by this, but now it is also mentioned that the H matrix is full rank, is given in the question. So, full rank meaning that now this upper bound is actually satisfied with equality. This means rank of H is actually equal to the minimum out of nt or nr if nt is less than nr then the rank of h is simply nt if nr is less than nt then simply rank of h is equals to nr okay so rank what is rank it means the number of linearly dependent rows of a matrix right so full rank all the rows are linearly independent like that so this 
is exactly what uh, we have said uh, it is option c option c we'll try and okay good okay Alright, so now let's go to the fifth question. Assuming so far it's fine. So read the fifth question. Again, this is based on entropy. Actually, in information theory, it's a very significant entropy. It's known as the binary entropy. The channel. Yeah. Okay. So I think already you can guess the answer. It's option C. Okay. Let's see. This is question five. Right, we have a Bernoulli random variable. X having this uh, Bernoulli distribution with parameter p. Okay, so there are two symbols or I mean there are two bits 0 and 1 and each of them has corresponding probability right so you take probability of x getting value 1 is equal to p so this parameter p here this one is corresponding to this p okay and probability of x takes the value 0 0 and 1 are the two possibilities okay so uh, you can say this is like an alphabet from which x takes value so this is the set 0 and 1 like that so this probability of 0 would be Uh, if you denote it by some other variable q, it's simply 1 minus p, right? They should add to 1, therefore it's just a complement. Okay? Fine. So, okay. So, because uh, p plus q is equal to 1. Okay? Now, how do you find the entropy? You know, summation over i, right? Probability of x takes the value i times log base 2 of 1 over the probability x takes the value i, right? And summation i running from 0 to 1 right x can take two values 0 and 1 now just expand this so the first term would be probability of x equals 1 sorry x equals 0 we are starting with i equals to 0 times log base 2 of 1 over probability of x equals 0 plus probability of x equals 1 times log base 2 of 1 by probability of x equals 1 okay 
and this is what is the probability that x takes value 0 we have used 1 minus p for that this is 1 minus p log base 2 of 1 divided by 1 minus p plus again for probability of uh, x equals to 1 we have used p and this would be p times log base to 1 by p okay now log of 1 by 1 minus p we can simply introduce a negative sign right this would be this will be the first time and similarly for the next term we have another negative sign yeah and you can just switch the order yeah exchange the order and you have p log base 2 of p minus 1 minus p log base 2 of 1 minus p okay so yeah 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 and that's it yeah this is it and this is so if you check with the options this is simply option number c you see simply that and uh, these this star don't get confused this is not convolution okay this is just simply multiplication this star notation we have too many symbols so this and it looks kind of like this approximately this yeah this is drawing very roughly so this is h and if you call this as an h of p h of p p runs from p is probability right p runs from 0 to 1 and you will get a peak or a maxima at p equals to half okay and at p equals to half this would be 1 right you get half plus half which is one right I, I hope I'm not making a mistake okay so yeah so this is often known as the um, binary binary because there are just two bits right zero and one binary um, entropy function okay um, so this uh, matches with our option number c okay. the answer is option number okay good so good uh, okay now let's uh, look at the sixth one read the sixth question Okay. I think the question is clear. Uh, everyone should be.
be able to understand the meaning of the question so you have a fair coin we are looking at question number six so you have a fair coin and you toss it you flip the coin and uh, you flip it until you get the first head okay and x is a random variable which denotes the number of flips required okay we need to find the entropy of this random variable x in bits and you are supplied with two standard um, infinite uh, series summation formulas um, um, so yeah let's see this one question number six what we are doing is <clears throat> a fair coin fair coin is flipped until the first head appears and x is a random variable which is denoting the number of flips or number of tosses required okay so what is the probability that x is equal to some number n okay an integer n positive integer n right so it means that what is the probability that n flips are required okay until the first head is appearing so what what that what does this probability actually mean so it means that you are getting the first head on the nth flip of the coin right and on the all the previous n minus 1 flips you are getting tails right and it's a fair coin there are only two sides heads and tails and fair coin it's uh, it means that okay all my outcomes only two possible outcomes heads and tails they are equally likely okay they are equally probable with probability half correct so this actually means this p of x equals n means the probability that tail appears on the first n minus 1 flips correct and the head appears on the following the immediate next which is the nth okay so you can also express it as the probability of tail okay so your sample space is basically heads or tails right so that's a possible outcomes of a coin toss so probability of getting tails is denoted by p of t and that occurs n minus 1 times independently so that's p of t whole to the power n minus 1 right times head occurring on the nth flip so p of head p of h okay so i'm still writing so p of h is probability of getting head p of t is probability of getting t okay right so this is 
tail on first n minus 1 flips and this denotes head on nh correct so what is this now p of t and p of h both are equal again we know p of h is equal to p of t it's a fair coin and both are half equally likely so this becomes half to the power n minus 1 times half okay which is nothing but half to the power n and mathematically what's actually going on is that x here the random variable x we, we have a name for this distribution so x has we call it geometric distribution and with the parameter half Okay. So probability of we just obtain probability of x equal n equals half to the power n. Right? And what is uh, n? n is the set of natural numbers because okay I can get head in the very first flip, right? Or I can get head after two flips on the second flip, I can get head on the third flip, right? So, meaning that I can get either head or I can get tail followed by head or I can get tail, tail, head or I can get tail, tail, head and so on. Okay. So, this n is varying, right? So, this corresponds to n equals to 1 in the first flip. This corresponds to n equals to 2. This corresponds to n equals to 3. This corresponds to n equals to 4 and so on. So, n belongs to this set 1, 2, so on. Fine. Now you are done. Now entropy, that's the thing. Now entropy of x is given by h of x, which is simply summation. Okay. Why summation? Because like there are discrete set of values for n, right? 1, 2, so on. Okay? It's not a continuum of values. Therefore, there won't be integration. We are not talking about differential entropy. We are talking about discrete entropy. So, this is uh, probability of x takes value n times log base 2 of 1 by probability x takes value n, right? where n running from 1 to infinity. So this is n running from 1 to infinity. First term is uh, this p of x equals to n. We just saw it's equal to half to the power. And this is log base 2 of 2 power. Okay. So what are you getting here? Half to the power n. So log base 2 of 2 power n is simply n, right? You can bring the exponent as a multiplicative factor in front and the remaining would be log base 2 of 2 which is simply 1, right? So this you can also write it as n running from instead of n running from 1 to infinity I can simply write it from n running from 0 to infinity times a n of half to the power n isn't it because the term n equals to 0 won't contribute anyways it will vanish so it's a just a redundant as a, as a trivial term so I can okay put my lower limit from 0 it doesn't matter right the non-zero terms will start from n equals to 1 only. Okay. So now look at this form. This is a summation. Okay. And this is where we need to go back to our question. 
and refer to this given expression. So look at the second expression summation n running from 0 to infinity n times r to the power n is equal to r by 1 minus r the whole thing. So we will need this uh, standard formula here. It's of this form you see it's exactly of this form. In our case r is half right. So this would be r times so r is half 1 minus r the whole square ok I will write it as well we were given so this, is, this is r to the power n equals r by 1 minus r whole square okay and one I think two yeah two exactly so this is half divided by in denominator you will have one by four so it is exactly two this correct two so checking with the options is option B okay option B okay right I hope all of you all of everyone is uh, clear with the steps and Okay. Okay then. Then uh, assuming everything is fine, now let's move to the next one. Okay. So look at the seventh question. read the seventh question all right so in question number 7 we are given two random variables x1 and x2 and they are identically distributed but not necessarily independent so it is not iid necessarily it is identically distributed may or may not be independent okay there is a quantity rho which is described as this which is defined as this 1 minus the conditional entropy h of x2 given x1 divided by h of x1 ok and we need to prove these results so the first one says ok we have to show that rho can also be expressed as i of x1 semicolon x2 uh, divided by h of x1 so this notation i I think you should be familiar with it uh, just like H denotes entropy IE denotes mutual information okay so mutual information means that okay there are two random variables x1 and x2 mutual information between these two random variables means uh, how much mutual dependence is present between these two random variables or in other words what can I infer about x2 by knowing about x1 ok what does x2 tell me about x1 ok so there should be a common information between the two as you might have seen through the Venn diagram visualization 
so this lies in the common region of these two random variables right the intersection of these two entropies is nothing but the mutual information right okay so let's understand this this the first part we have to actually prove that rho can also be written as this so let us do that so i'll uh, just note down the information x1 and x2 are identically distributed but not necessarily independent and rho is given as 1 minus h of x2 given x1 so this is the new this numerator is the conditional entropy of x2 given x1 divided by h of x1 okay okay so in part a let's start with the first part we have to express this in a different form which is i of x1 comma x2 divided by h of x1 so let's see how we can do this okay so rho again let me write it rho is So this um, you can write it as h of x2 given x1 divided by h of x1, right? Now this first term here, this term h of x1. I claim that I can write h of x1 as h of x2. I claim both are same. Can anybody argue why? Yeah. All I am doing is in this step, I am replacing h of x1 by h of x2. I am claiming both are equal. Uh, I may be wrong as well. Uh, do people agree with me or disagree with me? If yes, then why? If they are equal, then why they are equal or are they not equal? Yes, anyone? They are equal as their mutual information is same. Their mutual information is same. Uh, okay, so mutual information of x1 and x2 uh, equal to mutual information of x2 and x1. Yeah, that is true. That is that true. is true. Uh, but but that doesn't actually tell you that if uh, h of x1 and h of x2 is the same uh, ac actually if we uh, do the entropy of x1 uh, entropy of x2 at x1 yeah. then we get if we go through the integral this yeah, is yeah. the gaussian distribution yeah, yeah. integral then we get entropy of h of x uh, x2 minus h of x2 by x1 okay okay so i mean um, uh, it's okay you can uh, visualize it mathematically also but the plain and simple uh, because it is yeah one made that because uh, your uh, numerator portion 
is equal to mutual information of uh, x x2 and x1 that uh, the denominator a uh, numerator portion yeah 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 yes yes so yeah that that is true that is true But this step actually h of x1 I am writing as h of x2 okay this this I can write from the fact that it is given in the question that x1 and x2 are identically distributed okay so they have the same distribution and how do you compute the entropy of a random variable? You take the distribution, right? You take the probability, summation over probability times log of the reciprocal of the probability. That's it. Both have the same distribution. Of course, their entropy would be the same. So that's the simple idea. That's it. And what you were saying is the, the initially in the um, the mutual information of x and y is the same as mutual information of y and x that is true that is a universal fact but that doesn't necessarily imply that h of x is also equal to h of x that is not true okay that is not necessarily true so here the idea is by this claim for this claim is that since since h of x1 is equal to h of x2 as x1 and x2 are identically distributed we are not even using independence because in the question it is mentioned that they are not necessarily independent but they are identically indi uh, distributed indeed okay so let's say x has a distribution like this you know it, it takes uh, the uh, these three let's say states 0 1 and 3 0 1 and 2 with equal probability with probability one third each y also has the same distribution with probability if you compute h of x and h of y they would be equal right that's the same thing they have the same distribution they have the same entropy that's the idea okay so this the reason why i am transforming from h of x1 to h of x2 is now evident now you see now you recognize this form now can you recognize this form you are already saying i think so this 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 term in the numerator yes. uh, that is the mutual information exactly that's the mutual information and uh, we are asked to prove this thing only so this is i of x1 semicolon x2 divided by x1 so this is exactly the form which is given see this we have this okay simple okay right and uh, just uh, maybe for those who are not uh, familiar with the uh, entropy or the mutual information just uh, maybe you can visualize it through some diagrams like this let's say through a wind diagram like this okay blue circle is denoting 
entropy of random variable x1 the green circle is denoting although it's not at all a circle but assume it's a circle this is denoting a uh, random variable of uh, the entropy of random variable x2 okay now this region okay this uh, shaded region okay this this uh, sky blue shaded region is actually your conditional entropy of x1 given x2 okay meaning that if you know x2 what is the amount of uncertainty remaining in x1 what is the amount of information information is a measure of uncertainty right so if you know x2 you see exactly that's what it is happening is it looks like this shaded blue region it looks like as if you have taken a bite from an apple from a fruit okay you know this portion from x1 x2 and the remaining part is this conditional entropy h of x1 given x2 right and similarly similarly uh, which color should i use this from the same logic this is the conditional entropy of x2 given x1 what's remaining in x2 given you no x1 right and if i consider this overlap this common region shown in this orange okay this as you know the name suggests this is your mutual information between x1 and x2 which is the same as your mutual information between x2 and x1 because it's the overlap right it doesn't matter you change the order it doesn't matter yeah okay and so there are certain identities actually you can come up with here so for instance um this mutual information you can express as i of x1 comma x2 which is the same as i of x2 comma x1 i can write this as uh, from the circle on the left hand side i can express this mutual information as h of x1 minus h of x1 given x2 right this whole blue circle and i am subtracting this light blue shaded portion so i'll be left with this small overlap region right this common region that's the mutual information or if i look at it from the perspective of the circle on the right corresponding to x2 i can do the same thing i can subtract h of x2 given x1 from h of x2 and i land up in the same mutual information right 
and um, so yeah this is the relation you know between mutual information and uh, entropy so i mean this okay, this this is the mutual information this is mutual information okay right and uh, there is also something called the uh, joint entropy okay which is denoted by h of x1 comma x2 in this case there are two random variables so x1 and x2 in general it could be n number of them so h of x1 comma x2 so on till xn so this is actually the entire area okay so and you can write it you can express it in multiple ways you can either write it like h of x1 so if you have h of x1 then in order to complete the entire region the remaining part is h of x2 given x1 correct this entire blue circle plus this h of x2 given x1 see just just look at the diagram and just verify yourself or or and this is just simple to you know though your your say theory like in probability also you study right p of a union b p of a intersection b those things using venn diagram this is very similar and you can also express it uh, this is very much related to that probability concept so you can take the sum of h of x1 the first circle you take the first blue circle on the left again you add the circle on the right the green one h of x2 but on doing so what you are doing is you are adding this common region this mutual information portion orange portion twice right so for that you have to subtract this one okay so this is another way of expressing the joint entropy okay okay so yeah that's a very uh, brief uh, description of this quantity um now we can move to the part b part b in part b we need to prove that this parameter rho is lying between 0 and 1 okay that is actually clear that is actually you know very straight forward to visualize as well because if i take this row from the second line let's say this one this expression and let me call let me label this as some equation um, star okay okay so if i label this as equation star so equation star, uh, star says that rho is equal to h of x1 minus h of x2 given x1 whole divided by h of x1 now i want to say that okay this is uh, bounded between 0 and 1 i can say that right because you see if you compare the numerator and denominator the denominator is h of x1 whereas the numerator is h of x1 minus something okay so this is strictly less than the denominator numerator is strictly less than the denominator and one more thing and uh, that is true only if this h of x2 minus x1 
is non-negative and that is actually true okay entropies are non-negative okay entropy calculation if you do it's, it's always non-negative but also there are i mean recent researches which uh, do tell us about negative entropies but here you assume this is non-negative so this is greater than or equals to zero this conditional entropy this is greater than or equals to zero and this is also less than or equals to h of x this this step do you see how this step i have written firstly it is non negative that is fine but this step h of x2 given x1 is less than or equals to h of x2 either through diagram also you can see from the diagram also you see h of x2 is the complete green circle whereas h of x2 given x1 is only this remaining okay you took one bite from the apple and the remaining part right and logically it is actually you know x1 what's the remaining uh, information in x2 so of course it has to be you know a less than or equals to x2 right right so this is due to that logic okay so i'll just uh, move this and h of x2 again we saw that it is simply h of x1 because they are identically distributed right now now we have everything since this is true we have this row this row quantity this thing bounded between 0 and 1 does everybody see this simple math this is just like algebra right it can be maximum one it can be uh, minimum zero okay so in other words rho is bounded between 0 and 1 true okay so this was based on a measure of correlation and of course correlation you know you kind of normalize correlation it it is 0 and 1 of course 1 means perfect correlation 0 means completely uncorrelated all right so now in part c they are asking when is rho equal to 0 when is rho equal to 0 part c when is rho equal to 0 so rho equals to 0 means so rho we have already expressed in the form of mutual information right here in part a this i of x1 comma x2 divided by h of x1 this we have proved so i of x1 comma x2 divided by h of x1 this is root so this is zero okay so this means your i of x1 comma x2 is zero and what does this mean the mutual information between x1 and x2 is zero this okay what one one thing you can say with respect to the diagram that those two circles are like disjoint they don't have any intersection right so the, there won't be any orange overlap region but a more mathematically uh, 
sound statement would be x1 and x2 this means if mutual information is zero this means the two random variables are independent okay why do i say so because what is i of x1 and x2 this you know right h of x1 minus h of remaining in x1 the conditional entropy if x2 is known or you can also write it as h of x2 minus h of x2 given x1 both are fine so this now tell me if x1 and x2 are independent what happens to this term this second term if x1 and x2 are independent just just go back to your probability that this should be go to entropy of x1 exactly exactly right because x2 is independent of x1 so even if you know x2 doesn't matter you we still have the complete uncertainty in x1 remaining as it is right so this is equal to h of x1 since x2 is independent of x1 okay so what are we having here the first term was already h of x1 second term became h of x1 and this is simply zero this is simply zero okay so two random variables are independent uh, will mean that they have zero mutual information okay so this is the condition so uh, rho is zero when x1 and x2 are independent okay that is the condition so x1 and x2 are independent or i should write it like must be independent for rho to be zero okay that is the conclusion okay so we have looked at lot of uh, quantities now uh, let's just uh, end our session with a small discussion on okay so this one actually uh, in our last week we uh, had one of the questions so i plan to you know discuss it brief briefly today because uh, there seem to be uh, confusion so this question actually um, related to that uh, concept of cell breathing so um, it had another part as well so in which it said like what happens if the radius actually increases uh, beyond the nominal value so you know that nominal value right uh, there are two base stations and they have some radius of influence around them okay so the point at which there are two let's say adjacent base stations a and b and their radius is the circles are just just touching each other so that's like the nominal value of the radius okay if the radius increases beyond that so of course there will be like overlap between the two coverage areas and there would be an, an intersection point right so the users who are belonging in that intersection region will face interference right uh, from from the adjacent base stations so that's the problem uh, 
interference but that was for the case when we increase the radius beyond the nominal value so here what happens is the radius reduces below the nominal value and the immediate effect of it is that there would be regions of no coverage okay diagrammatically so this is last week's uh, uh, clarification okay so here you have to understand one thing the cause and the effect or the cause and the consequence so the cause is high load there are many users let's say and due to limited number of resources you are unable to you know support those many users okay in 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 your cell and they will have you know within that cell they might have intracell interference as well so high load is there lot of users they might like the users within a cell might interfere in, may, might interfere among themselves which is the intracell interference so how do you deal with high load is that its consequence or its effect is reduction in coverage area reduced coverage so mathematically speaking so high load okay if there is high load it means there is higher capacity requirement i need to you know send signals to those many users lot of users you know there is high capacity demand high capacity requirement i have to satisfy that correct and capacity you know is given by b log base to 1 plus snr signal to noise ratio right where b is the bandwidth of the channel but this b is fixed bandwidth is fixed now you have to increase your capacity b is capacity b is capacity to increase your capacity b is fixed what do you need to do you should increase your snr meaning that you should be increasing your signal strength or the power higher p okay and higher p means just go back to your sorry go back to your free space propagation model remember p is actually pr of d actually or i mean you can simply you know it's a function of d actually it's a function of d that's why it is denoted like that but as you it's like p simply simple notation and so this is power and on the x axis you have distance which is d and it decays remember it decays like this so this p was one decays as 1 by square of distance even that uh, formula also pr of d equals to the received power at distance d is equals to the transmit power divided by 4 pi by lambda by t the whole square right i think this was the formula isn't it a 
or did I write? Uh, I, I think I just click it. Right there. The denominator, one second, one second, it was. Ah, this was actually. For by lambda, it was there. For by lambda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was also thinking that p by lambda. P by lambda. And you see, this is actually uh, inversely proportional to d squared, right? That's why it's reducing with t. So in order to feed more power, that's why you need to decrease d. That's why you need to reduce d. Okay, that is d has to go down. That's why you are shrinking. That's why you are coming, you know, reducing the radius. And what happens due to reduction of radius? The scenario was like this. The scenario was like this is let's say a base station A. Let's say it was the circle and we have let's say another base station B and it had coverage like this so you see these two circles are just touching okay there is no interference yet between adjacent uh, base station so this 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 actually is called this this radius this radius is called the nominal radius okay now you have to reduce the d right the reason i just mentioned so if you reduce the d now let's say it becomes like this Okay. That's why you have to reduce the D. Okay. That's why you are required to reduce the distance and the consequence of this is that this region uh, this region, this annular shaded region, okay, these are your points of no coverage of course you are not covering these points correct so this this was your option a this was your option a that's that's what happens creation of regions with no coverage that is one this is the cause high load this is the effect reduced coverage and creation of points of no coverage for the other case if you increase the radius then fine in, you are increasing coverage there th won't be any issue of no coverage points but you will end up having interference between adjacent base stations that will be the problem but in this case there is problem of creation of points of no coverage using this idea mathematically I've explained. Okay, so its, it's answer was actually uh, option A creation of points of no coverage. Okay, creation of regions of no, no coverage. Okay, so that concludes uh, today's session we have covered all the eight questions
and we also uh, you know thanks to uh, uh, the person who mentioned about uh, this question number eight of uh, assignment twelve. So I have mentioned in this uh, note also there is a small uh, typo so to speak. Uh, like, uh, it should be like the three symbols are transmitted uh, five times as frequently as the remaining uh, five symbols basically because it's the eight PSK constellation so eight minus three is five in the question in the assignment it's written two I think other two symbols so instead of two this instead of this two it should be the remaining five symbols okay all right so um, thanks for the participation and um, I hope uh, uh, things were fine and uh, uh, I wish you all the best uh, for the upcoming exam and for the, for the future and yeah hopefully it was a good uh, uh, takeaway so thanks thanks for being such a wonderful audience I, I am really getting uh, a very happy experience with these sessions so yeah if there are no further questions then uh, we can sign off uh, yeah thank thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you all right so uh, all the best to everyone uh, you, you may leave the call thanks so much i'll stop the recording